Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, so was a plea? I don't. It doesn't appear that a plea was ever done. Is that correct? It was a plea before uh, retired Judge Angelini, and uh, we agreed to deferred adjudication. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he set it for PSI. All right. So we have a problem. Things have been lost because here's, here's the report. If you want it. Oh no, I have the report and everything, but okay. I have this blank sheet as though a plea was never taken. It was six years deferred adjudication. No, no, no. I have the the steps and everything, but I don't know how he pled or anything. So this is what we're guilty. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm assuming the court reporter was here. Yes. All right. So we're going to go on the record. 2023 CR 7388 State of Texas versus Elliot Scott Vela. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state yard. James Seelop for the defense. Are you Mr. Vela? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Vela, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. With regards to the charge of robbery, do you recall how your plea was? Was it guilty, not guilty, or no contest? There was no contest, but he said um, he found me guilty. All right, so you entered a plea of no contest. Is that correct from both sides? Your Honor, uh, I do not have the file in front of me, but I could have that full judge. No, 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 that's fine. All right. And it was a deferred, uh, we recommend, the state recommended deferred adjudication, so he withheld finding guilt. That, that's correct, Judge. I do have in, in the, not the physical file, but in the, uh, on JD, it's it's a six uh, six years of uh, deferred, uh, deferred adjudication, Judge. All right. So the court reporter did take a record because you wouldn't have been able to enter your plea without it, without the court reporter record. So I'm going to put it down as you pled no contest because you're telling me that you entered a plea of no contest. And you understand a no contest plea is not really you saying that you're guilty or not guilty. It's just saying that you're not gonna fight the charges against you and you're not gonna contest what people are saying. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. All right, the previous judge found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Let me just review things very quickly. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Finally, I get to the point where the P3, who is P3? So let me just find that in the report. All right, we're going to go off the record. If you all can look over that, because it's not showing me I know that the previous judge found there was sufficient evidence to find him guilty, but they haven't identified the defendants in the report. Uh, okay. So they have a P3 listed, but there's no mention of P3 in the police report. P1 and P2, they have them listed as the complainants. Right. And then they have a suspect one and a suspect two. Unless I'm reading something incorrectly, it doesn't mention who the suspect one and two is. Okay. So if you all can find that and then I'll take you all up. Okay. All right. Uh, as I say, maybe I'm missing it because it is Friday and Monday. <laughs> yes, you know, I'll look all right. If you have a seat, once they find that, we'll take you up. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. <laughs> On Elliot Vela, are you all ready? Ready, Your Honor. Hello. I'm, I'm stalking you, but in a friend. <laughs> okay. All right. And everyone, please do not talk behind the court reporter if you're in the box. Just ask the deputy, they will move you to the further end. All right. Do you have the exhibit? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Let me look over this real quick.
Ah, all right. Uh, just for the court certification outside the record, uh, I got the e discovery and uh, there was video of uh, my okay. funeral. Uh, oh, I just found it. In, in, <laughs> thank you. All right, we're back on the record in 2023 CR738A, State of Texas versus Elliot Vela. Uh, state, any more evidence you wish to present? Yes, Your Honor. We'd like to uh, supplement State's Exhibit 1 with that uh, additional police report, Your Honor. No objection. All right. I know uh, previously the previous judge stated there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And after reading State's Exhibits 1 and attachments with the supplement, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. And the court has accepted into evidence without objection the supplemental to the stipulations. Is there anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, we have a plea bargain for deferred adjudication. He is uh, responsible. For Everyone, us. please whisper. If you cannot whisper, then you cannot talk while we're on the record. He's responsible for a young son and uh, he wants to turn his life around. So I asked the court to give him a, this one last chance. Six years of deferred adjudication. All right. So here's my question for you Why are you stealing? Um, money for my son. Um, I, no, no, your son doesn't wear cologne. No, Does your son wear cologne? No, your honor. How old is your son? Seven years old. He's seven years old. He's not wearing Versace cologne. So why are you stealing? Well, I was selling the stuff for, for money. It was stupid. So why not just get a job? I people know. always say there are no jobs available. They are, but there are just some jobs that people think are too good for them. Like nobody, I always pass by, I see job applications for bill millers mcdonald's and mcdonald's i think they're paying twenty dollars an hour i know some people say well i'm not flipping burgers for twenty dollars an hour but you know what guess what in order for this society and any society to run well everybody has to be able to do something yes, yeah. you need some people to bring in the crops i think people are learning that you need somebody to be maintenance you need somebody to clean up you need somebody to change the bedding at the hotels. You understand that? Yes, sir. But sometimes people think they're too good for that. So why do you think you're too good to work? I don't. I was I was working at Toyota. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I don't. No. Yeah, you do know what happened. If you were working at Toyota, why were you no longer working at Toyota? Transportation. No, because there's via bus. So why were you no longer uh, working at Toyota? Out in the country where I'm at, I'm in Poteet. Mm -hmm. Toyota doesn't go out there. Mm -hmm. And nobody else in Poteet works at Toyota. Not where I was at. I find that very suspicious. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's other people that work, that work there, but I didn't know anybody that did at the time. Yeah, I, I, I still don't understand that. If you have a great job, so you're telling me if I have a job and let's say my job pays $60 an hour and I'm working there, I have a child mm -hmm. and I'm just going to say, well, I can't get to work anymore, so I'm just quitting. That doesn't make sense to me because you find a way to get to work. You either take an Uber, because I know Toyota pays well, you take an Uber to wherever the VIA bus stop is, and then you take VIA into your work. So that doesn't ring true to me. So again, why are you stealing? And you were stealing with other people. So all of you all got together and say, hey, um, neither one of us have a job and we need to support our children. So let's go to Nordstrom's Rack and steal. I don't even understand going to Nordstrom's to steal. So we're back to why. It was, it was stupid. It was just to make money. And how old are you? 28, 29. So you're 28 years old and you're going to have a felony because you wanted to take some cologne. It was a mistake. No, it wasn't a mistake. You know what a mistake is? Let me tell you the definition of mistake. Let's say. My mom didn't call me, but my mom calls me every day. So she would have called me and told me what the weather is. So let's say she calls me and she says, Stephanie, it's going to rain in San Antonio. Even though she doesn't live in this state, she always keeps her eye on the weather. And I'm like, okay. And then she calls me before I'm leaving. Don't forget your umbrella. I come to court. I have a black umbrella. I sit down next to somebody else who also has a black umbrella. I see people coming in. They're wet. 
I pick up the umbrella after I finish my business and I leave. And when I open up the umbrella, I don't see my initials. I took the wrong umbrella. That's a mistake. You made a choice. And let me give you an example of a choice. My mom doesn't call me and tell me it's not going to rain. It's looking cloudy, but I'm like, yeah, it's not going to rain. It's San Antonio. And if it does start raining, it'll stop fairly quickly. I come to court. I see people drenched because it's storming raining. The person next to me has an umbrella. I don't have mine. I know it's raining. So you know what I do? I take their umbrella. That's not a mistake. I knew I didn't bring my umbrella, but hey, I want to, I don't want to get wet. You understand? So don't tell me you made a mistake. You made choices. Do you understand? Now, who do you live with? My mother. And who else? My mother, um, her husband, my little sister. All right. So you're not really taking care of your child. When's the last time you saw your child before being taken into custody? Like a month prior. All right. Does anybody have the October 9th? Was a PSI done on this? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You got it. I have it. Thank you. Okay. So they're asking for residential treatment. They say you have a alcohol problem and it appears that you do. Well, I don't I don't I the last time I drank was New Year's of last year. I don't it's not a problem at all. And it's not even drinking, they get drunk. It's it was just on New Year's that was the last time. All right. Well they're asking they're asking for you for residential treatment. I don't know why they're asking for residential treatment because it says you started drinking alcohol at 23 and you do two to three liquor shots two times a year. That to me two times a year? does not. Yeah, that's what it says. Two times a year. You know, the PSI was on when she asked me, I told her on New Year's and on Christmas. All right. I think it's more than that. But you're saying you don't need inpatient treatment. We're going to start you out with outpatient treatment. Court is going to sentence you to six years deferred adjudication. Intensive outpatient treatment with probation. 100 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to require parenting classes. Once he completes parenting classes, the 100 hours of community service will be deemed satisfied. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person regular UAs, make sure they test for alcohol. You're not allowed to drink alcohol at all while you're on probation. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. There's to be no contact with Nordstrom's. And that includes Nordstrom's Rack, the regular Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's Off-Broadway. You're not to go there. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. There's to be no contact with Adam Trevino. He's a security guard for Nordstrom. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And once he's except for his child, no. Once he started doing parenting classes, then you can come back, and I'll probably lift that. But he has a alcohol problem, according to them, and he's going around. And this is not, according to the police report I read, this is not the only location where they've been committing thefts. Did you understand? You There's to be uh, field visits one time per month for four months and then at probation's discretion. They would also probably ask for a theft course. Here's my theft course, don't steal. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. Do you need a course for somebody to tell you that? Yeah. All right, and we'll do the MRT. Probation, is there anything else he needs? Yes. 
90 and 90 days. So you'll have to do sober meetings each day. You can do those online. You can do those in person. They're all over the state of Texas, and I'm sure there are some in Poteet. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Is there anything else, probation? Do you have any questions? All right. Is there anything that you need from the court to be successful? No, I, I got it. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. You need to be making your son proud of you. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so do better. All right. And this court, in order to be successful on probation, communication is key. If you feel like probation is not addressing something, you can always come back to the court, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Have a good day. The, the, the probation officer will yeah. talk to you. No excuses. Uh, this is criminal trial division. Court is calling 2023 CR 8380 State of Texas versus Victor Mesa. I'll walk you through it. I'm Could Joey I? Nelson for the state judge. For the defense. Alma de Navides. And are you Mr. Mesa? Yes. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review that with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Mesa, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna show you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, it appears you're proceeding on the indictment as presented. We are, Judge going to show you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, less than one gram? That's a state jail felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mesa, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at two years in the state jail facility. There's a $500 fine. State recommends community supervision. There's to be $57 restitution for drug testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Judge. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of three years. There'll be a TAP evaluation and 80 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State, any evidence? State offers state's exhibit one with attachments. No objections, Your Honor. All right, you may continue to confer. Thank you. I'm gonna show you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, we're just asking the court to follow the plea bargain agreement. My client is 49 years old and he is currently employed. Um, he does remodeling and plumbing. He works under a subcontractor and he is working full time. And so we're asking the court to grant his application. All right. Uh, Mr. Mesa, when you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Just for one and yonder. All right. No methamphetamine no or anything? No, ma'am. When's the last time you used meth? I just said I don't use it now. I don't well, use why it. is there meth in your wallet? I cleaned out my niece's car and I think I put it in there. It's been like... Who cleans out? Wait a minute. It's because I took it out of the impound yard. She had, she had lost it to the impound yard and I took it out and I was cleaning out the car. And okay, I let discovered. me just tell you why that, that doesn't ring true to me. I don't know anybody who cleans out somebody's vehicle. I can understand, oh, I'm cleaning out my sister's vehicle. I don't have a sister, but I can understand. Or I'm cleaning out a relative's vehicle. Oh, this is a social security card. Let me put it in my wallet for safekeeping or in my purse. I understand. Yeah. But I don't clean out a vehicle of a relative and I see meth and I'm like, oh, let me put this meth in my wallet for safekeeping. Who does that? Actually, it was I put in there to present to my brother, Ariana, but that's the truth. We're going to do a drug test today before I send it to you today. Are you prepared to go today or you need water? No, ma'am. I can go today. Okay. All right. We're going to do a UA and then we will come back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. We're back on the record in 2023. Do you need this for them to do their plea? We're back on the record in 2023, CR 8380, State of Texas versus Victor Mesa. All right, Mr. Mesa, you're positive for something other than marijuana. Why? I only take Sudafed and Tylenol because of my sinus and because of my pins and my screws and my foot. That's it. Man. Mm -hmm. I don't see how that's possible. Yeah, and I, I can do it every day this week. And y'all, I mean, if I have to stop taking my medication, I'll stop doing that. But mm -hmm. I really do it because of my my surgery on my foot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not okay. All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to sentence you to a $500 fine. That will be probated. And you stated you didn't have children, correct? Ma'am. Do you have children? Yes, ma'am. How many? Two. What are their ages? 26 and uh, 21. And who do you live with? My mother. Why are you living with your mom? She needs help with the kids. She's uh, She adopted my niece's kids. And how old are they? They're 10 and 5. I mean, uh, 10 and 15. All right. She doesn't need help with the children if you're using marijuana. Yes, and you're positive for marijuana. When's the last time you used? Two days ago. Why are you using drugs and you know you have to come to court? Ma'am, that's that's something that I've been doing for a long time, and I was honest before about it. You know, I don't I don't lie about well, it. I know you've been doing it for a long time because when they pulled you over, they said you were eating it. I wasn't eating. I don't know how. Well, they said your teeth were green and you had marijuana leaf in your I, mouth. I had told the officer I just came from my house. I was going back to work. I just ate, but I mean, I'm not marijuana to according no, to them. <laughs> All right, court is going to sentence you to two years in the state jail facility, suspended and probated for four years. $57 restitution for drug testing. Hundred and fifty hours of community service restitution. I'm gonna re require parenting classes. And probation. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to go out to that house and check on the children who are in uh his mother's care. So it'll be field visits one time per month until further notice. Children don't want to be around people who smell of marijuana. It mix, messes with their brains. It doesn't help their brain develop. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And don't be bringing marijuana into your mother's home. Yes, ma'am. And don't be driving her around with marijuana in a car with the children in the car because they don't need to be smelling marijuana. It stinks. Yes, Field visits one time per month. 
150 hours community service restitution. I'm gonna order parenting classes for him. If he completes that, then the 150 hours will be waived. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. I'm gonna want him with the UA hotline, uh, test him for levels. Those levels had better start going down. You understand? Yes, ma'am. There's gonna be 90 sober meetings in 90 days. Uh, TAP evaluation, follow TAP recommendations, but I'm sure they're gonna recommend intensive outpatient treatment. So let's start with intensive outpatient treatment before inpatient. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am. Gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Also, because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. You're going to go off the record. Don't be bringing nonsense to your mom's house because she's letting you, a grown man, live at her house. Understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you Judge. May we you're welcome. Excused. Uh, yes, probation will go over to All right, we're gonna go on the record. Court is calling 2023 CR 5315, State of Texas versus Aaron Alvarado. Can I party is announced for the record for the state? Is that done for the state? Bridget got some defense. All right, and are you Aaron Alvarado? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you entered a plea of no contest to count one on October 2nd, 2023. According to the plea bargain agreement, Punishment is be assessed at a cap of five years in the prison. State is silent on your application and they're taking in consideration night mag number 691315. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report state? Nothing we say. Defense? I do, Your Honor. I have a yes. Um, page four, the victim impact statement. Yes. Uh, I'm objecting to... Uh, Number five, Ms. Calderon, that is the victim's mother. Mm -hmm. She is the one requesting the $500 restitution. It's our position she is not the victim. She cannot request the $500 restitution. And also number eight. Well, let's go back to the restitution. The restitution that she's requesting is for what exactly? It appears to be the broken window. All right, so was that her home? It was not the home. It was a broken window of a vehicle. I'm not sure who's the, who owns the vehicle. Okay, all right. And then your other objection? The other objection is um, page four, number eight. <laughs> this is the victim impact statement. Again, mm -hmm. the victim impact statement is being made by uh, Juanita Calderon, not the actual victim of Carla Calderon. Okay. All right. And state with regards to a complainant making the victim impact and is not the complainant? That's correct. Juanita is not. Counsel was, was correct, Your Honor. All right. So do you have any response to our objection? Because I'm assuming defense, you're asking that I disregard that entire yes. statement. State is unopposed, Your Honor. That, that's All fine right. by the state. All right. So that will be disregarded by the court. And then with regards to the restitution for a broken window, the court doesn't have before it, one, what is the broken window related to? Because there was a broken window in the police report that's related to a habitation. So I don't know what this $500 is for, and the court does not have a bill for $500. Neither does the state owner, so we're also happy to disregard as well, unopposed. All right. Anything else with regards to the PSI uh, defense? Not for any objections, Your Honor. All right. Any witnesses? No, Your Honor. 
other than Mr. Uh, Alvarado. He may want to make a statement to the court. All right, do you wish to make a statement? No, ma'am. Um, just if you do want to make a statement, then I will place you under oath. The state is silent. However, the state is allowed to speak on any discrepancies or any fact issues. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So do you still wish to make a statement? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Uh, Aaron Alvarado. All right, defense. Um, or do you just want him to make a statement? Judge, if I may yes. continue, can I make my argument for the court to grant his application? But he wants to be a witness. No, he was going to just apologize to the court. Yes, ma'am. At the end. That's all, all right. he wanted to do. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to do that unless you're under oath. So do you wish to be placed under oath and make a statement to the court or not? Oh, if, I mean, if, so, if it's not needed, ma'am. Um, well, I mean, I, I can't judge whether it's needed or not. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, I mean. Well, no, 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 no. Yes, ma'am. Either you're going to say something, and if you're going to say something, then the state will have a chance to question you. Okay. So which would you like to do? Um, uh, I mean, I take full responsibility for my... Well, you know. all right. He's given his statement. So you're taking full responsibility for your actions? Yes, it's the biggest mistake I made in my life. No, these are big, big choices people are making, not mistakes. So... What are you taking responsibility for? And this for my actions. You know, what were your actions? Or the, the night of the incident, or whatever, or whatever has happened. No, whatever is whatever. What is whatever? The, the what I'm being charged with. What are you being charged with? Uh, family violence and it was a, a burglary habitation or breaking a window. All right. So what? Is the whatever this is not sign fair where we we, we change I'm yada sorry. yada yada to whatever so what are you apologizing for what are your actions you know just to the victim and the family just where you know everything what is everything just disrespecting and you know just how are you disrespectful i know just breaking a window and then just you know, disrespecting the household. All like, right, so breaking the window, and then you say breaking the window and disrespecting the household. So how did you disrespect the household other than breaking the window? I mean, I feel that it's disrespect. I feel that it's disrespect. All right, so you broke the window, and what else? Because we're not here for the breaking of the window. We're here for family yeah. violence. Arguing and... Not here for an argument. Because if we were arguing, the last time I checked, is not a crime. Yes, ma'am. So, what are you apologizing for? I, and this is probably why your attorney was like, there's nothing for you to say. But I want to know what you're apologizing for. Just everything, ma'am. I apologize. What is everything? I don't know. I wasn't there. So, I have no idea what you're apologizing for. Just, just, just family violence, just being, arguing with the daughter. Okay, arguing is not a crime. Arguing is not, does not result in you having a family violence charge. So what is everything and what are you apologizing for? I mean, uh, I didn't do nothing like, uh, I didn't leave my hands on her, but I mean- Oh, I you want a jury trial? No, ma'am, I'm just saying I apologize, ma'am. I'm, I'm well, you're telling the court that you didn't put your hands on her. And we're here for you putting your hands on her. If you're saying you did not do that and you want a jury trial, we will give you a jury trial. No, ma'am. So then what are you apologizing for? For my actions. And what were your actions? I mean, I was just arguing with her. And... Any questions? Because arguing is not a crime. Can I get a second? Sure. Uh, 
I apologize, man, for the, the choking and the strangulation. Uh, I um, apologize for that. Of who? What's the name of the person? Oh, uh, I apologize for the choking and strangulation on Carla Cadron. All right, so why are you choking somebody? Um, and I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but how tall is she? She's the same height, but actually a little bit taller than me. All right, so why are you choking somebody? Um, I don't understand that. I mean, I've been through the same thing with her and I just couldn't handle it no more. All right. All right, any other questions? Nothing from the state. Defense? Judge, I think. And I do see where she is, was sentenced to 20 months That's for some correct, offense. John. And was this for a violent offense as well? I believe it was for criminal mischief, Your Honor. All right. What's the criminal mischief about? Does anybody know? I can pull it up if you'd like, Your Honor. I just... Sure. Is it criminal mischief against his property or something? I have no idea, Your Honor. And the reason why I'm asking this is because, I'm, now mind you, I'm disregarding the victim yes, impact. I asked him that specific question. Okay. I asked him that specific question. You know I read. So. I asked him that specific question. So I'm just trying to find out. If that's related to think, this i don't think they know that either okay but the victim's name is Brittany calderon in that matter okay so might be the sister of ours but no family relation to the defendant okay all righty well i'm disregarding it but the victim impact statement by a relative seems to suggest that the 20 months is somehow related to this defendant yes all right and i ask that's one of the first things i asked the state um, judge, if I may, based on uh, Mr. Alvarado's criminal history, it's our position that he is a perfect candidate for a deferred adjudication because he has no other felony offenses. Mm -hmm. I know the court inquired um, and inquired about him taking responsibility. Um, he was a little hesitant or significantly hesitant about doing so, but that's part of the process and that's part of 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 um, the rehabilitation for someone to be on probation, for someone to evolve and someone to take responsibility while they are on probation. And so again, I feel that Mr. Alvarado is a great candidate for probation for that reason, because he has no other felony offenses. And if, you, if the court were to give him an opportunity, I feel that he can prove to you that he will be successful uh, in completing his deferred adjudication. He, it's my understanding that prior to being arrested 225 days ago, he was working as a mechanic. He intends to continue to work as a mechanic once he is released. Um, if you do look at the pre-sentence report on page, page seven, at the bottom it says, if the defendant is supervised, he should be supervised at a moderate level, which is level two. He's not someone that should be uh, supervised at the high risk level because he's not a high risk defendant. So I think the court should consider that when making the decision. So we are asking the court to grant his application for deferred adjudication. He's willing to comply with any condition that the court may impose upon him. Okay. All right. And then I see that there's a mental health issues as well, based upon the TAP evaluation. That's correct. All right. If I were to grant your application, who would you be living with? Uh, a girlfriend of mine. Why people jump into relationships? You're not ready for a relationship. So you're not going to be living with your girlfriend. So who, where are you going to be staying? Oh, my stepmother. Does your stepmother want you there? Yes. What is your stepmother's name? Amanda Alvarado. That's the 114 East Buchanan address. All right. Before you get into uh, another relationship, you need to work on yourself. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any children? No, ma'am, I do not. All right. That's a good thing because you're not ready. All right. The court is going to sentence you to eight years deferred adjudication. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact 
with Carla, C-A-R-L-A, Araceli Calderon. And my understanding, she's currently in, sounds like maybe state jail facility. The BIPP course. Uh, Mick Caseload. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Defendant is to reside with Amanda Alvarado. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. Field visits one time per month for four months. And then thereafter at probation's discretion. And I'm gonna do partial GPS for uh, the first six months. And if there are no issues, then it'll be tracking. And counsel, you can approach after a six months time period to see if I will consider removing that. Taking in consideration, night mag number 691315. There's to be 200 hours of community service restitution. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Uh, yes, dual diagnosis, outpatient treatment with probation. All right, is there anything else? Can you waive the GPS fees? All right, I'll ask that the fees be waived or deferred. Will that be done through the jail? Uh, yes, since he's in custody, we can do it through the jail. All right, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, no going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement. And because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, so we can go off the record. Here's the thing. You're not ready for a relationship. And I don't say this lightly because I have a green thumb. I can grow a lot of plants. People were shocked that I was able to grow gardenias in San Antonio. Beautiful gardenias. The snow killed them, but we're making a comeback. Beautiful rows of Sharon. Before you get in a relationship, get an orchid. They sell them at the H-E-B. They sell them at Walmart. When you get them, they're beautiful. The flowers are all on them. Wait till all of those flowers fall. And if you can get that plant to rebloom, then maybe you're ready for a relationship. And I say that because you get the little instructions on the orchids. They say ice cubes, which you're not supposed to do. They tell you, oh, put it here, put it there. Blooms still fall off and blooms don't come back. And having an orchid takes a lot of patience and you got to be very gentle with it. So if you're able to get an orchid and make it rebloom, you may be ready for a relationship. You understand? Yes, All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, are we ready on Victor Mesa? All right, Mr. Mesa, if you'll come forward. <laughs> 